So in today's real estate exam prep video, we're gonna continue our vocabulary word series. And today we're gonna to discuss vocabulary words 62 through 65 of 300. So let's get to it. Hey everyone, my name is Paul Vachesky and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel where our mission is simple to help you pass your real estate exam the first time. Vocabulary words go a long way to help you achieving that goal. So let's look through, look at vocabulary words 62 through 65. And these particular groupings of vocabulary words all revolve around someone losing title or losing ownership to their property. In my previous video, uh, we did the vocabulary words all evolving around voluntary alienation, which is the acquiring of real property. So today we're gonna uh, focus on those words about losing ownership. And it starts with number 62, which is involuntary alienation. And the definition of involuntary alienation is the transfer of title. Remember title in real estate means ownership. So it's the transfer of ownership without the owner's consent. And there's four main ways that that happens. Number one is through adverse possession. And I did a very detailed video on adverse possession, everything that you need to know. And if you wanna check it out, there's a link right up here in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Number two, foreclosure. Now this can be a bank foreclosure. You stop making your payments to the bank, they're gonna foreclose on the property. This would also include things like a foreclosure resulting in a failure to pay your property tax. So we have a tax lien certificate foreclosure or a tax de deed foreclosure, maybe a special assessment foreclosure, those type of things, any type of foreclosure. A sheet and eminent domain are also examples of involuntary alienation because a sheet and domain, uh, eminent domain, both are examples where the owner isn't voluntarily, you know, they're not selling their property to somebody, it's being taken from them. Number 63, adverse possession. Now remember adverse possession uh, is where an owner loses title or ownership by another person occupying the property for, and this is important, these are your key legal elements that must be present and proved in front of a judge for adverse possession to take place. The person must occupy the property for a prescribed statutory period of time that is determined by individual state laws in a hostile, continuous, distinct, visible, and actual way. And that is basically, they're not hiding the fact that uh, they're they're acting like the owner. We call it color of title. That means that person is out there acting like they're the owner. They're mowing the lawn, plant, planting flowers, putting up fences. They're putting up for sale or no, no trespassing signs. They are uh, paying the property taxes, those type of things. The average person on the outside looking in would think that the adverse possessor is, is they're the owner. They're the true owner when in fact they're not. Number 64 is a term called quiet title action. And quiet title action is very, very essential to any one of those four ways to losing ownership, all right? Involuntary alienation, including if, if someone is foreclosing against the property or someone is an adverse possessor. So they're trying to get the title to property based on an adverse possession claim. Quiet title action is a legal proceeding where the court is going to establish an individual's right to ownership in that piece of property. And it allows for people that also think that they have a claim in ownership, whether it's actual or perceived, it, it is their day in court. So if I'm, if I'm trying to get your piece of property using adverse possession, what I'm going to do is file the quiet title action in court. I'm gonna provide notices to anybody and everybody that may have a, uh, a claim of record or I'm, and I'm gonna publish that and usually in the local jurisdiction or the local area's newspaper. So if anyone has a potential claim to that property's ownership, whether it's actual or perceived, they're gonna come into court and they're gonna stake their claim and either it's going to be valid or it's not, and the judge is going to make that determination. So if a judge determines that, for example, in this adverse possession claim that I'm making against you, and I have fulfilled all the essential elements of actual, distinct, all those 
essential elements of an adverse uh, possession claim. The judge is going to deem that I do have, in fact, ownership interest in the property and, and it's mine, not yours anymore. That's called quiet title action. Another thing that we use quiet title action is, uh, a way that we use quiet title action is, for example, if I were to if I were to foreclose on the property using, for example, a tax deed uh, foreclosure or a tax lien certificate foreclosure because you fail to pay your property taxes, what I'm going to do to get clear, free, marketable title after I have received title is I'm going to then file quiet title action just to clear everything up. Number 65 is color of title. It's a, it's a key term that people really, they just have a hard time understanding. And, and I have a definition on your screen. It says the appearance of having title or ownership to property, whether it's personal or real, by some evidence. And we'll get back to that. But in reality, there is either no title or no ownership, or there's a vital defect in the title. So let me give you a couple of examples of color of title. Number one, let's say that... Uh, Let's say I tell you that I own this piece of property and I bought this piece of property from Jim Smith. And you say, prove to me that Jim Smith transferred title to you. So I'm gonna get the deed that shows that Jim Smith transferred the title to me. Great, that happened three months ago. However, what I failed to tell you is two days ago, I transferred title to Sally Jones. So, I, I'm making you believe and you have no reason to believe that I don't own this property. That is called color of title. Another example is when somebody is possessing a piece of property at, under adverse possession. They are called the adverse possessor. Everyone on the outside looking in, including neighbors, everyone thinks that you own the property because you are paying the property taxes, maybe you're, you're mowing the lawn, you possess the property, you put up a fence, you put up a no trespassing sign, you have maybe built a barn or a shed or a garage on the property. Uh, you're doing everything that a normal owner would do. And so therefore you're making everybody believe that you're the true owner when you're not. That is what we call color of title. There you go. If you're going to continue studying vocabulary words, check out this video right here. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click the little circle to my left. Comments and questions down below. Love both of them. That's it. I'll see you all in the next video.